Hello everyone, welcome back to this next lecture. So in the previous lecture I had executed this IPC example project but except that I had executed and showed you only the debug window, right? But we did see from the debug window that the flux variable was changing and we were also seeing that in the receiving CPU which is CPU1, the CMPA value was changing according to the change in the flux variable. So in this lecture, let us now execute this with the microcontroller and the oscilloscope in the video. So with this, I'm going to bring the microcontroller into the video. So you can now see the microcontroller in the video. And in this case, I have only one single connection and that is the GPIO 6, which is P6. And that is the A output of EPWM number 4. Because this is the EPWM where we are actually making a change to the duty ratio. So this is the only thing we need to see and therefore we have the oscilloscope measuring that one particular gate pass. So with this let me go into the debug mode again. and the program has been loaded and let me execute it. So the program is now running. So for this I'm going to zoom in to the oscilloscope because that is the only thing we really need to see now. So you will now see that there is one waveform and that is the yellow waveform. So the blue waveform is currently zero because you see that nothing is actually happening with the blue waveform. We are not even measuring anything on that one. So now that we are here let us now start executing CPU2 code. So what we do expect to see in this example is we will see these gate pulses changing in width. So let me come over here and start the process. So first I will connect and once connected let me load the program. And we go to CPU2 RAM and look for the dot out file. So the program has been downloaded and executed. So I will execute this and now we will quickly observe how the gate pulses change in width. So if I execute it, you will see that the gate pulses are still high or at least 80% in width and now you will see they have decreased 50%. And if we wait a little longer, you will see that they have further decreased down to 10%. So this clearly shows that CPU2 is sending new duty ratios to CPU1 according to when the flux crosses different threshold values. And of course, this is it will be at this level because the flux is never reducing. And therefore, once it crosses the number 10, then in that case, duty cycle is permanently decreased to 10%. So this shows how we can communicate between the two CPUs. So again, I'm going to, with this, I'm going to stop this microcontroller video. And we are almost at the end of this particular lecture. So what was significant in this example is how we were able to send notifications from, from, from one CPU to the other CPU. And along with that notification, we were able to send data from one CPU to the other. And in the other CPU, we were able to configure an interrupt service routine to listen to that particular notification so that when that notification is received from the other CPU, then in that case automatically an interrupt is generated and within the interrupt service routine, we can read whatever data has been received from the other CPU, right? Of course, in this case, we are not implementing a two-way communication. There are lots and lots and lots of possibilities you can you can implement quite complex what do you call communication protocols because remember you have quite a lot of registers that you can configure adjust according to your requirements. So you could essentially have a two-way communication where CPU 1 also provides data to CPU 2 and back and forth right. So all these things are possible however I do not want to make this way too complicated this was just to show you how to set up this inter interprocessor communication module and how you can exchange data. So if any of this did not work or you faced any other issues, please post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to help you. Otherwise, 
I will see you in the next lecture where I will conclude on this section. Thank you so much for listening and see you soon. Goodbye for now.